Friends, today we are gathered 
to celebrate the life and the faith of probably one of the greatest men to ever walk the face of this earth. Charles Raymond Fitch, or as we affectionately know him as Chuck, was 90 years old when he passed away at his home in August 31, 2020. Chuck was born on September 20, 1930 in Braidwood, Illinois, to late Charles and Mabel Fitch. He married the love of his life, Minnie Ann, or as many knew her as Sally, on August 29, 1951. Following his retirement from Peabody Coal Company after 35 years of employment, Chuck obtained an associate degree in arts with an emphasis in real estate. He then started a second career at Le Le Lynette Eves Realty Incorporated and, remain and remained there until he became ill earlier this year. Chuck had been actively involved with the Greenville United Methodist Church, having been a member since moving to Greenville in 1971. Besides his family, serving in multiple capacities with the church, the Great Banquet and the ACT Christian Academy brought him the greatest joy. Chuck served his country in the world's greatest navy on board the USS Bennington from 1950 to 1954 and was deployed during the Korean War. Chuck was preceded in death by his lovely wife, Sally, by his brother, Ken. Chuck leaves behind a legacy of love. He is survived by his three children, Sidney Fitch of Greenville and his wife, Bonnie, Stuart Fitch of Greenville and his wife, Cindy, and his daughter, Lori of Lexington and her husband, Jeff. He leaves behind six grandchildren and seven great-grandchildren, two sisters and one brother, and a community and a church who loved him dearly. At times like these, uh, human words often feel so insufficient. So I'd like to read to you from God's word as a way to bring comfort to us. First from John chapter 14, Jesus says, do not let your hearts be troubled. You trust in God, trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, so that you may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? And Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And then from 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Uh, normally we would say this at a wedding, but this actually sums up so much about Chuck. The Apostle Paul writes, If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, if I have faith that can move mountains but have not love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. Now we see but a poor reflection as in a mirror, but then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. For the greatest of these is love. Let us bow our heads. Dear Heavenly and Gracious Father, Lord, as we are gathered together to celebrate the life of a great man, we come grieving with deep loss, but Lord, also come celebrating a life well lived and celebrating the faith that Chuck had in you. Because we know the promises that you have given to us are true. To be absent from the body, to be present with the Lord. And that one day we shall see you face to face. So today as we celebrate Chuck's life, 
as we mourn his passing, we know that right now he gazes into your wonderful face. He sees your glory. He is surrounded by angels upon angels upon angels. And he sings the song of salvation. Father, I pray that you would comfort the family and friends, that you remind them of the hope that Jesus Christ brings. And may you wrap your arms around them and help them to remember the great man that Chuck was. For it is in Christ we pray. Amen. And in the house that we had, there was this giant oak tree that stood out in the front yard, and it had always been there. It's one of those trees that were so big that you just assumed that God himself planted it because you just never thought that it would never not be there. 
It was always there. It would always be there. When you thought of that yard, you automatically thought of that tree. And then one day, the unthinkable happened. Hurricane blew through and knocked the tree down. And after it was cleaned up, I remember I was looking outside the window where that tree used to stand. And it just seemed so empty. It seemed like there was this giant void there and that you knew something was supposed to be there and it wasn't there anymore. Something that you thought would always be there was no longer there. And I think that's how many of us feel right now with Chuck. Chuck is one that you thought would just had always been here, you know, because everybody knew that, that he was God's best friend. <laughs> and you assumed that he would always be here, and it's hard to imagine not having Chuck here. Chuck was such a staple here at the church. He was a fixture here. In fact, if, if you could not find Chuck, nine out of ten times, you knew exactly where he was. They'd call the real estate office and say, do you know where Chuck is? Hold on, look out the window. And they'd see if he sees his, ch his truck at the church. And sure enough, there's Chuck. Chuck was always over here. And he was such an important part of the life of not only this church, but this community and so many lives. And that's why he's going to be missed dearly. And you're going to miss him dearly. And I want you to know that it's okay to grieve. As Christians, we have hope. And we know that Jesus Christ has conquered sin and death. And we know that heaven awaits us. But that does not mean that we still don't hurt. Remember Jesus when he went after the death of his friend Lazarus. Jesus knew that he was going to raise Lazarus from the dead. But as he stood outside the grave, remember what Jesus did? Jesus wept. It's okay for us to grieve. It's okay for us to hurt. But Paul tells us to grieve as those who have hope. Because we know that Jesus Christ has conquered sin and death. We know the power of his resurrection. And we know the hope of heaven that Jesus Christ brings. And so that's why we approach this day with a, with a saddened heart, but also with a hopeful heart and a heart full of gratefulness that you were so blessed, that we were so blessed to get to see and to know such a wonderful, godly man. As I was thinking about the verse to share this morning, and it's not your typical funeral text, but I thought it's one that just spoke loud about who Chuck was, and that is Galatians 5.22, it's the fruit of the Spirit. And you all hear this, it says, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against these there is no law. Now who does that sound like? Well, it sounds like Jesus, but also sounds a lot like how Chuck lived his life. See, Chuck demonstrated in many ways what it meant to be a follower of Jesus Christ. What it meant to love unconditionally. To serve unselfishly. And to laugh with a joy that, that came from somewhere deep within his soul. <laughs> that was contagious. And one of the things that I was just so proud of this week was how many people told stories about how they learned how to follow Jesus by watching Chuck. Whether that was a five-minute car ride when they picked up Chuck to bring him to church when he couldn't see, or if that was people who were just in front of the church getting a bulletin from him and getting a hug. People told stories about how Chuck taught them about Jesus. And they said, I want to be like Chuck. And I thought, wouldn't that be a great T t-shirt? Be like Chuck. And I think that'd be something great for us to aspire to. So as I look at these, these fruits of the Spirit, these characteristics, I say, wow, this is Chuck. And so the first one thing is, you know, Chuck was definitely joyful. You know, there are some people, when they walk into a room, they don't have to say a word. Just by their very presence, everybody is lifted up. And Chuck was one of those people. When he walked into a room, when he was there, everybody else just felt better. 
Everybody was just in a better mood. He just brought that into that room, and that was because joyfulness is contagious. And he had that. He loved to laugh. He loved to smile. He loved to pick, especially at, at Ron's expense. <laughs> Chuck would often have this little laugh, and one of my uh, folks in the church called it the Chuck Chuckle. <laughs> and said that no matter how depressed or how bad of a mood you were in that day, if you heard the Chuck, the Chuck chuckle, you felt better. And, and Chuck, the kids loved, I've, I've often told that the best judge of character is children. And every child loved Chuck. In fact, when the preschool directors told me that, that they often feared for Chuck's well-being because whenever he'd walk in, the kids would bum rush him. I mean, they would run all at once and try to attack them and hug them, and they loved them. And Chuck loved the kids. I mean, tell me, how many other men Chuck's age do you know would go on youth trips? How many know would volunteer at vacation Bible school? How many would take their time to go spend time with preschool kids? That says a whole lot about his character. Chuck was also very kind and gentle. People said, I don't remember ever hearing him say one cross word. And he didn't judge you. You see, Chuck didn't care whether how you looked, how you acted, who you were, where you've been, what you've done. Chuck was going to love you regardless. And he was going to care for you and treat you like family. And that's why he did so great at Celebrate Recovery, at ministries like the Great Banquet, to where he would go into prison, sleep on the floor, and it didn't matter if someone was serving with him or if someone was there as, as, as a guest at the Great Banquet. He was family to them. In fact, I was told that he became known as Mr. Great Bank, the Great Ban Banquet because they loved him so much. I think a story that I was told this week that, that just blew me away. Uh, some of y'all might be familiar with the story, but when the church was being renovated, uh, they hired a crew to come in and do the floor, and that crew came from North Carolina. And when they came in here to, to the floors, that, that crew actually got into some trouble. They had stole a printer from the church and had been running some counterfeit money from the church. Yeah. And so Chuck at that time was the foreman, kind of, kind of helping keep everything together and doing stuff. And to show you the characteristics of Chuck, Chuck would go to the jail and visit them. I mean, what does that say about unconditional love? He loved and he cared. He would pray for you, he would comfort you. In fact, one of the great stories I heard this week was one of our members who struggles with anxiety and depression. Chuck came up and said, I don't understand what you're going through. But he cared for her and loved her regardless. But then this past winter, when Chuck's eyesight started going, Chuck got a little down himself. And Chuck went to her and said, I understand what you're going through. And he hugged her and they cried. But the thing she pointed out that was so great was here was Chuck feeling down and depressed, but his main concern was ministering to other folks. And that was one thing he did. Chuck loved to serve. In fact, there are so many things that are done in this church that we don't know what's going to happen because Chuck did everything. <laughs> Chuck did so much that, that most folks didn't even know he was doing. Chuck served in so many ways and helped in so many ways that it was just amazing the difference he made and the patience he had. One of the stories that was told me this week is one day when Ron uh, was needing an operation, he had to go visit a doctor in Glasgow. And at that time, his wife was going to take him, but she woke up and she was sick. And so he said, well, I know what I will do. I will call Chuck. It's 5 o'clock in the morning. 5 o'clock in the morning, he calls Chuck and says, Chuck, can you take me to Glasgow? And Chuck agreed. And the patient, and, and these are Ron's words. He said he'd listen to my incessant talking. <laughs> 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 
But he says, but I always knew that he was there to help without hesitation. I love that. People knew you could count on Chuck to be there for them. In fact, I look at all the characteristics of the Spirit. The only one I think he might not have had, that he might have had trouble with was self-control. Because I understand that he loved a good potluck. In fact, I was told he was very ecumenical in his potlucks. That he didn't care whether you were Baptist, Methodist. If you had food, he would be there. <laughs> and he loved to eat. One of the stories that was, was told me I love, Clyde and Sharon Stovall said that one day they invited Chuck to come and eat with them. And, and after the meal, she, she said, okay, Chuck, do you want cake or pie? And Chuck's response was, well, is there a rule that you can't have both? And so after they got done eating, guess what Chuck had? He had a piece of hot fudge cake and a piece of coconut cream pie. <laughs> but the most important characteristic for Chuck was love. If you knew Chuck, you knew what love was. Because he loved you. He encouraged you. He comforted you. He supported you. And he gave the best hugs around. And he loved every one of y'all. He loved his grandkids. He was so proud of them. So proud of all that they had accomplished. He loved his church family. I want everybody to know that uh, the church made videos for Chuck to see. And that Chuck got to see those videos prior to his passing. And he would wave at the screen. <laughs> but he loved everyone. And that's why we're going to miss him so much. But again, as we approach this, we don't approach death in fear. We approach it with hope and peace. And Chuck did. Chuck was at peace because he knew what was awaiting him. He knew that heaven was there. You know, the Bible doesn't really talk much about heaven because our minds can't comprehend just how glorious and how great heaven is. But a few things we do know about heaven, what we'll find there. First, we'll find relief. There'll be no sorrow, no sickness. There'll be no need to stretch out your throat. I always like to think that you'll be able to eat as much as you want. Because heaven does talk about a banquet. There'll be no sadness, no sorrow. Second, there'll be a reunion. Have you ever been to the airport and you see someone who's been on a long trip and they get off the airplane and there's people there waiting with signs and, and they're there just gathered around and looking, peeking, and see, is, is it him, is it him? And when they see the person get off the plane, they're like, it's him, and they run up and just love on them. I imagine that's what, when we arrive at heaven, what that's like. Wow, you're here. Chuck, I told one of his granddaughters, that he wanted to spend his 90th birthday with his wife, Sally. He got to have that. And what a beautiful reunion that must be. And finally, there will be a reward in heaven. After all that Chuck had done in this life, the greatest reward is that he got to see Jesus Christ face to face. And no doubt in our minds that he got to hear these words, well done, my good and faithful servant. And he was given a robe of white and a crown. And he stands in the presence of Christ himself, surrounded by his glory. And I also like to think that one of the things that God does is he says, let me show you all the people you've touched. All the lives that are here today because of what you've done. I want to close to you with a testimony from one woman about the way that Chuck impacted her. Her name is Lisa Henry, and this is what she wrote. I was very sad to hear about Chuck. He is a great man and was instrumental in saving my life. I walked into the Methodist church on the verge of suicide. I just couldn't find any peace and had convinced myself that everyone would be better off without me. This was 12 years ago. I told God that he had one more chance, so I went to the Methodist church on a Sunday night for Celebrate Recovery. 
I was not strong enough to walk into the church during regular hours because I was convinced that they would turn me away. At that time, I had been sober for 10 years, so I was more comfortable with those kind of people. Well, one of those kind of people was Chuck. He loved me back to life. Every week, he treated me like I mattered. He treated me like I was special. He hugged me even though I didn't deserve it. God put Chuck in my life to show who he is. I know God today because of Chuck. And I'm alive today because of Chuck. He is a great man. So today as we mourn the passing of Chuck, let's celebrate his legacy. And let's be like Chuck. And let's love the way he loved. Let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly and Gracious Father, Lord, we thank you so much for the life of Chuck, for the way that he touched and impacted so many for your kingdom. We are grateful that we were so blessed to have him in our lives. And Lord, though it hurts right now for him to not be with us, Lord, we know that his legacy will live on for generations and generations. Father, I pray that you will comfort the family and the friends at this time. May your Holy Spirit wrap his arms around them, and may they know the hope that Jesus Christ brings. So, Father, help us to remember the good times, to share the memories, the laughs, the joys that Chuck brought. And, Lord, give us just a glimpse of the glory that Chuck now sees and what awaits those who call upon your name. We give you all the praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.